Hello everybody and welcome to another episode in our TNA series in TW 2020. I believe it is episode 63 if I remember right. I of course am CR Daredevil and we are on the road to lockdown 2015. And we have a couple of big time matches announced for tonight. Of course made at the end of the show last week by yours truly. We have D'Angelo De Niro taking on Eddie Edwards. And then we have a huge main event. As the TNA World Heavyweight Championship is on the line in a rematch from Genesis 2015. It is going to be Sheldon Benjamin defending the championship against Samoa Joe. I mean, technically it's a rematch, but in that match, Joe was the champion heading into the match. And he lost it to Benjamin in that title match. So, can the reverse happen tonight? Can Joe win the title back? Will Benjamin be able to retain? Who knows? We'll have to find out. We dive into things in front of 8,156 people at the Cameron Indoor Stadium in Cameron, North Carolina. Or as Justin Roberts would say, North Carolina! <laughs> anyway, we open up with a D'Angelo De Niro uh, interview with Christy Hemi. Only got a 58 because I think Christy's still kind of bringing people down, but I am going to be working her to the bone tonight. Not to the bone, but she's in a few segments tonight um, because I really want to get an interviewer who I can have... Uh, you know, not that I'm saying I'm going to get her on a Gene Okerlund level like I have in WCW, but at least, you know, somewhat close to that. So, uh, but 58 here, as De Niro basically just kind of laughs off this matchup with Eddie Edwards tonight. He says that Eddie's not a threat. He's not worried about him. And that uh, when he beats Eddie Edwards, people will continue to realize that he is the Pope. He is the greatest. Um, and that uh, the BDC are in control here in TNA. So 58 rating here for that. Then we go to the ring. And we have Juice Robinson in the ring. He's just kind of in the ring, you know, talking. He's kind of he's got kind of a fun baby face character. So he's you know, he's hyping he's talking to the crowd. He's like, hey everybody, you know, good to see you all coming out. Uh, you know, I'm I'm Juice Robinson. I'm just, you know, looking for opportunities here in TNA. When all of a sudden, very familiar music hits. A man who we haven't seen in a couple weeks' time after what happened, James Storm comes out from the back and he is pissed he is livid of course we haven't seen him in a couple weeks last time we saw him he was being laid out by his then tag team partner bobby rude uh breaking up beer money so he comes out he is pissed he immediately starts brawling with juice robinson which leads to a 66 rated matchup that is just absolute chaos like we're just ta we're talking like these guys are just it's one of those things that, like, Juice is trying to fight back, but, like, James Storm is just brawling with him around the crowd areas, you know, throwing him into the guardrails, fighting with him in the crowd itself, bringing him back into the ring. Hits an eight-second ride. One, two, three. Five, thirty-six. Nice and tidy match. 66 rating. 62 from James Storm. 42 from Juice Robinson. Uh, yeah, it ended up being one of those things that, like, you know, Juice was asking for an opportunity, so he got an opportunity, but he got an opportunity against a very pissed-off cowboy. Afterwards... James Storm grabs Mike and says that he should have seen it coming. He should have seen it coming that Bobby Roode was getting jealous about the fact that he had a shot at the TNA World Title and Bobby Roode didn't. But you know what? He's not going to sit back and cry about it. He's not going to whine about it. He's not going to do anything about that. He's pissed off and he wants to punch Bobby Roode's teeth down his goddamn throat. So he says that if Bobby Roode is man enough... Then he's issuing a challenge one on one between the two of them at lockdown. So there you go. We're having a potential match between those two at lockdown. And no, it will not be a blindfold match or any other stupid stipulation. <laughs> I, was that Storm and was that Storm and Harris or was that Storm and Rude? I can't remember right offhand right now, but I just remember there was a stupid blindfold match that the blindfold cage match that Storm was a part of with a former tag team partner. But that's not happening in this one. Um, if the match ends up happening, it'll just be Storm and Rude one on one in a regular cage match. So there you go, sixty-five. We'll have to see if uh, if Rude ends up accepting that. Then after that, we go to commercial break. We come back. We have a triple threat tag team matchup in the Knockouts division. Uh, it is being said that the winning team of this matchup will be challenging Io and Mio Shirai for the Knockouts tag team titles at. Lockdown. So that'll be uh, that'll be pretty interesting. And in this matchup, that gets a 57 rating. Cheerleader Melissa and Kana, the recent duo team 
that's been happening here in Impact, get or in TNA, that is, get the victory over Gail Kim and Serena Deeb, who continue to have some issues with each other, and Candice LeRae and Evie in 10-15 when Kana pinned Candice with the Billiken. 57 there, Deeb with a 48, Kim with a 55, Evie with a 41, Candice with a 41, Kana with a 51, Melissa with a 54. Deeb seemed off, his ga- off her game. Eh, kind of sucks a little bit, but that's all right. That's all right. So we have new number one contenders. So the Shirai sisters, Iomio Shirai, have a new challenger. And, uh, you know, one might have to worry about their chances because um, Melissa and Kana have been on. I mean, granted, they've only had a couple matches, but they've been undefeated. And Kana's been undefeated here in TNA. She, this now makes her 13-0. and If I remember right. Did I remember right? Uh, check my notes thing here real quick. Yeah, that makes her 13-0. and So, that's not a good person wanting to be going up against. Somebody who's who is yet to suffer a loss in their career in, uh, in a company yet. Afterwards, 50-rated segment. As Melissa and Connor just have a bit of a stare down with the Shrys after the match. That, you know, you and me will come out from the back. The knockouts tag team titles are on their waist. And they're just kind of staring them. Stare down Melissa and Kana as we get a little bit of a stare down ahead of the now match at lockdown. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, title match happening there. Then after that, we get a 65 rated segment. Uh, Charles Beth performed poorly. That's because Kurt Angle refused to be scripted in this segment. (laughs) But that's all right. It's telling the story. So Charles Beth's backstage. When Kurt Angle shows up, you know, Kurt Angle shows up over and he's like, hey, man, what's going on? You know, like, we're doing, we're going to do some training today and all that stuff. And Betts kind of turns into him and is like, look, man, I, I definitely welcome all of the advice, all the training, everything you've been doing for me. I appreciate the hell out of it. But, like, you're Kurt freaking Angle. And, like, we've been winning a lot of, you know, we've been winning our, our tag team matches. We've been doing great. But, like, you're Kurt freaking Angle, man. Like, I know that you should be challenging for the world title. That you should be in the main event time and time again. And I feel like I'm holding you back. I feel like this tag team that we're doing here isn't really getting a lot of success right now when you're still kind of in the prime of your career. Like, you still could go out there and out-wrestle anyone. Like, I don't want to be holding you back, man. And Kurt goes to say something, but Charles is like, just, just don't let me hold you back, man. Like, I, I, I appreciate all the training. I appreciate all the stuff. I want to keep doing it. But, like, if you need to focus on a single, you know, I want you to still be focusing on your single stuff because you're still one of the, if not the best, in this company right now. And I don't want to be dragging you down with tag team matches. And he walks off. So, kind of an interesting little thing um, as we're kind of left to wonder what Kurt's going to do about that, I guess. But 65 rating here, not bad. Then after that, we have a fatal four-way tag team matchup. That gets a 66 rating. Uh, we are changing Eric Young's gimmick right now because I'm going to try to... He's Boy, I have let Eric Young just be terrible in this series. Um, he's got chilly momentum. He has an awful gimmick, so we're changing his gimmick with hopes. All right, I got a great rating. Um, Yeah, we're changing his gimmick with hopes that maybe it'll start kind of helping him turn things around a little bit. Because, boy, he's just been, he's taken a dive (laughs) compared to where he would have been at the start of the series. But anyway, in about the head decent wrestling, but not much heat, the Motor City Machine Guns defeat Forever Hooligan, Alex Kozlov, and Rocky Romero, Uh, the team of Petey Williams and Eric Young, and the team of Chuck Taylor and Trent, the best friends in 939, when Saban pinned Kozlov with a cradle shock. So, what is this match? Well, similar to the Knockouts tag team matchup earlier, this match is a number one contender match for the TNA World Tag Team titles. Um, now, you may be saying, Daredevil, Forever Hooligans haven't really earned a shot, neither are the best friends, and Peter Williams and Eric Young seem to lose all the time. Yes, but we also, I also had this match set up, the the idea, with the you know, what Mike Tanay and Taz are talking about at the commentary table, the idea that this match was set up because these four teams are teams here in TNA that the Briscoes have not already faced and defeated. Because that's the Briscoes have been on a tear during their title run. And they've been defeating just about every team that TNA has offered. So these four teams are teams that they have not faced yet. 
and not beaten yet. And so the Motor City Machine Guns get the victory, and we'll be going on to lockdown to challenge for the TNA World Tag Team titles. 66 rating, like I said. So there you go. We have the Guns and the Briscoes at lockdown for the TNA World Tag Team titles. Should be a really good one. Then backstage, we have Christy Hemi interviewing Coco Bana. Again, like I said, I'm using Christy Hemi a lot. It's going to keep happening. <laughs> um, I could go try to find a different interviewer, but I like Christy too much in this era of TNA, so we'll we'll stick with it. Anyway, she interviews Cole Cabana backstage. Cole says, you know, hey, last week didn't go, our way, didn't go my way. You know, I, I didn't expect Abyss to show up for that tag team matchup against, you know, with Jay Lethal. I didn't expect that to happen, but hey, I mean, it, you know, one day is one day, another day is another day. And if Jay Lethal thinks that just because he won a tag team matchup means that I'm not going to still be coming for that X Division Championship, then he's going to be sadly mistaken. Because I have talked to Daredevil, to CR Daredevil already. And next week, we're getting a number one contenders match for the X Division Championship. And I'm in that match. And I will win that match. And I will make sure that I get a shot. I, I get the next shot at the X Division Championship. So there you go. Number one contenders match for the X Division title next week on Impact. <laughs> Not sure how many people are in it or who Cole Cabana is facing, but Cole Cabana is in it. So there you go. Then after that, we get a 57 rated match. Um, it's basically just kind of a squash match. Um, Austin Aries defeats local talent Zachary Wentz in 512 by submission with a last chancery. Wentz isn't actually signed. He's, um, he's just on a one night deal. In fact, he just uh, entered wrestling like a couple months ago in the game. Um... So he was just, because he was a local talent, he was somebody I could bring in and, and use for this, because um, I wanted Austin Aries to basically just have a squash match. So he beats uh, Zachary once here in a 57 rated matchup. Austin Aries getting the victory there. He's got a game against Ken Sale. I will have to remember that. Afterwards, he grabs a mic, and he says that if Magnus can find his balls buried in Mickey James' purse, in the crowd, oh, then... Austin Aries wants a one-on-one match with Magnus. He says that it's been brought up a couple times before, but the history from the last year or so shows that both men are one-on-one -on -one against each other. Austin Aries beat Magnus. Magnus beat Austin Aries one-on-one -on -one in one-on-one -on -one matches. And Aries wants to put things to bed once and for all, have that one-on-one -on -one match against each other. But he doesn't want to have it a lockdown. He doesn't want it to be a cage match because he doesn't want Magnus to have any excuses for being inside some brutal structure or something like that. He says whenever Magnus finally finds his balls, he wants to have a one-on-one -on -one match with him. And he will be waiting to hear his answer. So there you go. One-on-one -on -one match between Magnus and Austin Aries potentially happening at some point in the future, if Magnus accepts it. But uh, Aries says he doesn't want it to lock down. The idea being I didn't want a whole lot of um, rivalry matches happening at lockdown since they're all cage matches, so... Um, plus I like the idea of Ares and Magnus not having a cage to settle this issue between the two of them. So there's that. Then we get Christopher Daniels backstage. And, uh, you know, he's kind of promo. He's not actually back. He's like in a, you know, it's a, a pre-taped promo. But he's like, he, he's like, I heard what you had to say last week, Adam. You said that, uh, you thought I was done, you know, that I said I was done with you and then blah, 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 this and that and, and all that stuff. But what makes you think that I care about you at all, Adam Cole? I've already beat you. A couple months ago, on Impact, I beat you. One, two, three in the middle of the ring. Maybe I'm just playing mind games. Maybe I'm just trying to get inside your head. Or maybe I care more about your buddy, the former X Division champion, Roderick Strong. Maybe that's who I care more about. In fact, hi, Roddy. I'm Christopher Daniels. We've already faced off in a tag team matchup at Victory Road, but maybe, just maybe, you'd like to have an actual singles match with me in the near future so that I can prove why I am the fallen angel and why you are simply not on my level. 64 rating there, as apparently Christopher Daniels doesn't care about having a match with, us, with uh, Adam Cole in the future. He wants a match with Roderick Strong, so that'll be interesting to see. Then we have a 73 rated matchup that suffered from a lack of psychology. That's what I figured was going to happen. That's not me grunting because I'm hurt or anything like that. That's just me grunting because of this, of what it said. 
Um, but but D'Angelo De Niro defeated Eddie Edwards in 11.47 by pinfall to the DDE. 73 rating. Could have been better, but there was a lack of psychology. Um, yeah. I thought about making this a, a couple minutes shorter because I saw their lack of psychology, or I saw their psychology levels, and I was like, eh, that's not going to work too well for a 12-minute matchup. But then I was like, eh, if I don't do it as a 12-minute matchup, then it's going to look even weirder because then it's like, all right, well, how is these two in a pretty big time matchup not having at least 12 minutes to their show to their match so whatever we got a 73 they have great chemistry against each other so that's cool we'll see De Niro with the 76 eddie edwards with the 66 so De Niro gets a victory over eddie edwards in this uh recent battle with the wolves getting involved in the battle against the, the beat down crew we'll have to see what ends up happening with that but De Niro gets a clean victory over edwards here no interference no cheating or anything like that i mean Granted, throughout the match, Tenera was, you know, kind of being heel-like, obviously. But he beat him clean. So we'll have to see what that ends up meaning in the future. Then we get 52. As we have the Monterey Machine Guns and the beautiful people backstage celebrating. They're going, you know, champagne spraying everywhere, all that kind of stuff. And Christy Hemi walks out and Velvet's just like, ugh. And Angelina's like, do you mind? We are trying to have a celebration here. And Christy's like, well, I just want to know what your guys' thoughts are about, you know, lockdown coming up. And Shelly and Saban are like, well, our thoughts are simple. We're winning the tag titles at lockdown. Velvel here is going to be retaining her knockouts title. That's all there is to it. And Velvet goes, yeah, see, Madison, Madison, you seem to think that just because you're a former champion that you're going to be able to walk right in here and just get this title from me at, at lockdown. You forget about the fact that I have been a dominant knockouts champion since October when, oh, let me think about it. Oh, I defeated you for the title. I have been on a roll since then. Nobody has been able to stop me. Everyone here on this roster has fallen to me. And if you think you're going to be able to take this championship away from me at lockdown, you are sadly mistaken. Because I'm going to make you wish that you were still a member of the beautiful people. And the four walk off. So there you go. 52 rated segment there. Then before we go to the main event, we get an 82 rated segment backstage as Joe cuts a promo before the main event. It's one of those things where Joe just kind of stares into the camera and says, that championship is coming back to me. And AJ Styles rolls up and says, hey man, I, I got your back. You know, I know the, the BDC will be there. Uh, will be showing up. I know that they're going to, even though Daredevil specified that there was supposed to be no outside interference in this title matchup, I know that they're going to show up, so I've got your back. And Joe's like, don't worry, man. I've got this. And he walks off. So, 82 there. And then we get the big title matchup. Smojo challenging for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship around the waist of Sheldon Benjamin. 83 rating. Lack of psychology. God dang it. I even kept them scripted for this. I mean, I did it was slow build, though. So maybe that hurt it a little bit, I guess, but still. Nevertheless, exceptional matchup. Sean Benjamin defeats Mojo in 1645 by pinfall to pay dirt to make defense number three of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. 83 rating. Both men had an 87 in the ring. Yeah, I was hoping for better. But apparently, 17 minutes on a slow build, they didn't have enough psychology for, which is weird. Because if I remember right, they should have the psychology for that. But we'll look at it after that. Nevertheless, Sheldon Benjamin making defense number three of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship after the match. After this really great matchup on free TV. Uh, the show ends with Sheldon Benjamin celebrating with the championship. As Samoa Joe just kind of, you know, slowly gets to a seated position in the ring. And is just kind of looking at Benjamin just kind of like, well shit. I... You know, in his mind, he's not actually saying this, but it's kind of one of those looks where it's like, well, shit, what do I do now? Kind of things. So, 84 rating, show itself, gets an 82. I'll take it. I will take that for sure. So, there you go. TNA Impact happened. Big time title matchup that I was hoping was going to be better, and it wasn't. Um, but, uh, but I'll still take it. You know, I'm not going to complain. Um, it still ends up being the best, uh, 
as we'll show real quick here. It still ends up being the best show we've ever put on. Victory Road was our best show heading into this, and we just beat this by three. We just beat it by three points. So this episode of Impact was our best show we've ever done with that 82. Matches wise, uh, the title match ends up tied for second on the list. Um, so that's good to see as well. I can't complain about that. Cannot complain about that at all. Um, trying to keep from things being spoiled, which is why you're getting that screen popping back up. Um, yeah, okay. It, Samoa Joe's... It, we'll show it here. Actually, to be fair, I don't think I have anybody on the roster that's a spoiler at this point. Um, Samoa Joe's psychology is a 74. It probably could have been... I. That's probably what's hurting it. Because I think Benjamin's is actually better than that. Uh, Benjamin's is at 77. Yeah, hey, Benjamin's is at 77. So, eh. Benjamin's 77 might have been good enough for that. But, it, yeah. It's probably the 77 and the 74 together that probably didn't, that probably didn't help with. If I hadn't done a, a slow build, maybe it would have been a better match. But, uh. But, you know, it is what it is. A um, couple of things I'm doing there real quick. All right. Anyway. Ratings for the night. 1.5 million. 1.577 million people watching. Best of the night. NXT had a 59. Saw Nick Dismore and Tyler Breeze defeat Team Crime. Which is, of course, Baron Corbin and Aiden English. So that's a thing. Um, FIP. Had Mr. Anderson, D'Lo Brown defeat A.R. Fox and Rob Echoes in the main. Got a 54 for the show. 59 from Ring of Honor. The saw Scott Steiner and Delirious defeat Roderick Strong and Bully Ray in a cage match. <laughs> just as I was reading that, it was just like, what in the hell is that? Also, ROH putting on two cage matches on their TV show, knowing that in a couple weeks we have our pay-per-view that's going to be all cage matches. Taking shots, ROH. Take shots all you want. We're still... We're still uh, running things here. Uh, we can look at Explosion real quick. Um, I do plan on doing two uh, weeks in this video again. So it's going to be a longer video, which is why I'm trying to hurry through this. Here's Explosion. Um, Zima Ion got a victory. All Night Express defeated the Smash Bros. Angelina Love defeated Casey Cassidy. Murdoch def Trevor Murdoch defeated Uha Nation. Hikar Shida got a win over Jordan Grace. And then the main event saw Kazarian defeat Rockstar Spud. So that was that's Explosion there. Uh, so yeah, as I just mentioned, we're going to be doing it two weeks in this video again, because I kind of like the idea of getting through it real quick. Plus, you know, you know technically in the WWE, the, the WWE, the WCW series, we're doing two uh, shows in one video, even though it's technically in the same week. So why not uh, kind of do that with this a little bit and see what happens. So, but anyway, we will see you here in a second for the third week of April in 2015. And we are back for the second episode of Impact in this video. We open up in front of 8,205 people at the Charles Koch Arena. Coach? Coke? Koch? I, will, I said Koch, whatever. <laughs> the Charles Koch Arena in Kansas. Um, with a backstage segment where Daredevil and yours truly, Sierra Daredevil and Maria, are backstage. We're in our office. When Magnus comes in, says that he's not going to stand... For the slander that Austin Aries was saying last week about him not having his balls and all that stuff. And so he wants to prove he has balls tonight. So he's going to have a match. He demands a match here tonight. He wants to prove to Austin Aries that he has balls. And uh, Maria just kind of puts her hands up. It's kind of like, hey, this, this isn't my battle. This isn't my battle. And uh, we kind of stand up from our desk smirking. And we're like, well, it's funny. Because... Somebody sitting right here just happens to also want a match tonight, a singles match tonight. And the camera, you know, shows Magnus and then kind of pans over as Magnus looks, you know, Magnus looks completely shocked and then just kind of pans over. And sitting there on the couch, you see Kurt freaking Angle. And Kurt Angle just stands up from the couch and he's like, well, that's great timing. I wanted a singles match. You want a match. So it looks like you and me are going to be doing this thing here tonight. And Magnus is like, well, I, 
And Kurt's like, I'll see you out there, buddy. And slaps him on the back of his shoulder whatever, before he leaves the office. And uh, Magnus gets all pissed off looking at Daredevil. And we're just like, hey, you asked for a match. So here tonight, the main event is going to be Magnus versus Kurt Angle one-on-one. That should be one hell of a match between those two men. We go to the ring where we have a 61 rated matchup that sees Chris Saban defeat Jay Briscoe in 11 13 by pinfall to surprise roll up. 67 from Saban, 70 from Briscoe. Great chemistry with each other. Why did this match not do better than a 61? Lack of an associated storyline. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It, it's too short of a story for it to be, for it to get a storyline involved. Um, plus, Saban. Already is in a storyline, and I really didn't want to have. I guess I could have had Kendrick show up and cost Jay Briscoe this match too, like he's done in the past. But eh, whatever. It's still sixty-one. That's not bad, honestly. Uh, but Chris Saban getting a little bit of momentum. Not only did the Guns win their number one contender match last week to earn the shot at Lockdown, but now Chris Saban has just pinned one half of the tag team champions here on Impact. So that's big. Can the Briscoes get the job done at lockdown, or will the Machine Guns win the titles for the first time in four years? We'll have to see. Then after this, oh my goodness, this did terrible. Probably because I rated Cage and Conley. I mean, they have like 60-something. I put them on Charisma, and they have like 60-something Charisma, but their popularity is also garbage, so that probably brought this whole thing down. Oof. Nevertheless, um, EC3 standing by with uh, Brian Cage and Caleb Conley, and he says that nobody has stepped up to try to stop him since he has declared that it's his story, his narrative, to be the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And so clearly he needs to find somebody to uh, prove that it is his story, and that he is going to be the hero of his story again. So kind of making it clear that he's going to go find somebody to target at this point. Got a 39. I will make sure I don't rate Cage Conley anymore. Um, yeah. After that, we have the in-ring return. Not that she was gone for too long, but the in-ring return of the former Knockouts champion Madison Rain as she defeats Brooke Tessmacher in 8-16 by pinfall the raindrop. 53 rating for the match, 57 from Rain, 39 from Tessmacher. Great to see Madison Rain still back to again she wasn't gone too long in the ring i think she was only injured for like what a month but maybe it was a couple months um but uh it's good to see her make her in-ring return especially since in 10 days time she has uh a knockouts title matchup against Velvet sky so she gets a victory here over somebody who can she considers kind of a friend in tna afterwards uh Beautiful people show up. Angelina Love tries to provide a distraction while Velvet slides into the ring to try to attack Madison from behind. But Brooks sees this coming and actually trips Velvet. Um, Madison sees that happen over and Angelina gets into the ring only to get caught by Madison Rain and hit with the raindrop. And uh, and uh, Velvet immediately scampers out of the ring as quickly as possible. So she's standing on the outside with her knockouts championship. Madison Rain gets a microphone and says... That you can try all the little tactics that you want, but you gotta, like you mentioned last week, you have to remember, I used to be a part of you. I know your secrets. I know your hint. I know how you handle things. And I will take that championship from you at lockdown. It doesn't matter that you beat me at Bound for Glory last year for that title. I will end your title run at lockdown. 54 here. Not too bad. 60 rated matchup here. Wow, that... What happened? What is happening with the show? I this might be because of an associated storyline as well. I probably should have had um, Adam Cole or Roderick Strong get involved in this somehow, but whatever. Uh, Sixty rated matchup here is Christopher Daniels defeats Jeff Hardy in eleven thirty eight by pinfall at Angels Wings. Yeah, I hate putting Jeff Hardy in that position, especially since he had a sixty six in ring performance. But this was basically just let's make Christopher Daniels look good. Um, I mean, he still had a good matchup. Jeff Hardy still had a good match, but the problem is, is that Jeff Hardy hasn't really, I haven't really been doing a whole lot with Jeff Hardy over the last few months. Um, and so he takes a loss here against Daniels. 
uh, you know, commentators are kind of like, well, this is Jeff Hardy's chance to kind of turn things around and finally get things back on track for him, but he doesn't get the job done. Um, so Christopher Daniels gets the win. Afterwards, backstage, Roderick Strong says, uh, you know, he had, he heard, this is like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's happening backstage, but it just happens to also be shown on the, on the uh, video screen. So Daniels, who's still in the ring, can see this happening. And Strong says, well, you know what? I, I heard what you had to say last week, Daniels. And you know what? You're right. We haven't had that one-on-one match. So I have no problem facing you. I mean, I've already, I already beat your, your tag team partner, Kazarian, um, multiple times. You know, I uh, have no problem beating you as well and proving that I am, you know, moving on up here in TNA and uh, get myself one step closer to being at the top and getting future shock you know, a lot more respect around here that it deserves and all that stuff. So yeah, I have no problem facing you. You just name the time and place Daniels and, and I'll make sure this happens. So it looks like at some point in the near future, we're going to get strong in Daniels. Um, spoilers. It's not going to be a lockdown, uh, but we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. So there you go. 71 rating for this match or for this segment. I mean, Let me get 65 as we have our number one contenders for the exhibition championship. Now it seems kind of weird. That these four men are involved, but it makes sense in my head. So, Cole Cabana defeats Chris Hero, Rockstar Spud, and Brian Kendrick in 1044 when Cabana gets Rockstar Spud to submit to the Billy Ghost Curse. 65 rating for the match, 67 from Cabana, 65 from Chris Hero. God damn. It's probably the best in ring performance Chris Hero's had in our company so far. 49 from Rockstar Spud and 47 from Brian Kendrick. Hero having a hell of a performance in the matchup, looked like he was close to winning at one point. Him and Kendrick were fighting with each other towards the end. It was one of those things that, like, Hero had Kendrick locked in a submission while Colt Cabana had Spud locked in a submission, and neither one of them really wanted to break their own submissions up, but, and so they were trying to get the other person to tap out, and unfortunately for Hero, Spud tapped out before Kendrick did, so. Um, Colt Cabana moves on to take on Jay Lethal for the Exhibition Championship, and that will be happening at lockdown. That match will be happening at lockdown. 65 rating here. Afterwards, Jay Lethal appears from out of nowhere and lays him out with the championship, standing tall over him to prove that he doesn't care about Cabana win being the champ or winning the getting the title shot, the rematch title rematch, because he is still going to remain the X Division champion. 78 rating. Good stuff from that. There you go. So can Jay Lethal retain the championship at lockdown? We will have to see. And after that, we go backstage. And Brian Kendrick is backstage and he's, you know, he's disappointed. He's taken off his, his, uh, wrist tape and all that stuff. And Paul Lennon approaches him and is like, dude, like what's going on with you recently, man? Like you're, you're costing, you're causing the machine guns to win matches by accident and you're stumbling, you're losing matches. You just lost out there just now. Like, come on, man, you and me, we get, we got to work together. Like you and I, you know, we can, we could be a force here in, in TNA. We could be a tag team. We could try to go in for the tag team titles. You know, we could do stuff for over. And all of a sudden you hear just this slow clapping, just, you know, and, uh, camera pans around and shows Chris Saban and Alex Shelley standing there and they're just like, look, and, uh, Chris just turns to Alex and is like, look, Alex, it's the, the sad saps of TNA, man. They're so heartbroken and disappointed. It makes me want to cry. And Alex Shelley's like, Chris, like, I, I don't understand, man. Like this, this teleno, this, this drama thing, this, this soap opera. It's, it's so sad week after week. Will they, won't they? Oh my gosh. And then they both stop with the mocking tones. However, before, uh, Saban's like, we don't really care what you two do anymore because we thought, we thought at some point in time that you two were going to be like on our levels here in TNA. But it's clear that you are nowhere near it. And so we're we're done. We're we are focused on becoming the TNA World Tag Team Champions of Lockdown. And we don't give a damn about you two anymore. And they walk off. 55 rating. As uh we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. Then why? How is this poorly placed? I suppose that EC3 segment did bring the crowd down some. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> if the crowd had been continuing to get built up, it probably would have been... It probably would have gotten hot enough to for this to work. Uh, this was a wild brawl, because our product requires that we have a wild brawl every week. 
and uh, uh, the commentators kind of mention that it has to do with the fact that Punishment Martinez is a big guy here in TNA, you know, coming, he's new to the town and all that stuff, and uh, he said he wanted to take on the best big guy in the company, and that ended up being a bit, so this match ended up getting made. It was one of those things that didn't get made, like, on Impact or Explosion, it was like, you know, before Impact uh, happened tonight kind of thing. So these two have a match, goes 10 minutes, and Abyss defeats Punishment Martinez in 10-01 by pinfall, Black Hole Slam. 68 from Abyss, 57 from Martinez. Pretty good match, regardless. Even with it being a poorly placed match, it's still got a 65, which is not terrible, honestly. Um, so I'll take it. I'll take that, for sure. But uh, yeah, Abyss gets the victory there, and uh, we'll have to see. I don't really plan on anything story-wise coming out of this, but it was good to see that Punishment Martinez could kind of almost hold his own with Abyss already. So, all at the same time, I'm also trying to make sure I get Punishment Martinez some popularity, because he is recognizable right now, but, like, I want to get him a little bit more popularity before I start putting him into, like, story stuff, because um, I do have some plans for him, but it's more of, like, the summer. But anyway, so there's that. And we got Bobby Roode, who has a pre-taped promo. Maybe we should have done this promo and then the match, and then the, uh, the wild brawl just there, because this angle got the crowd hotter. Um, <laughs> Bobby Roode sends in a pre-taped promo where he says that he heard what that lunatic had to say last week on Impact. And honestly, he doesn't really care about facing James Storm because he wants to be the TNA World Heavyweight Champion again, and he doesn't, he doesn't really care about James Storm at all. But he knows just how crazy James Storm is. He knows that James Storm won't stop until he gets his hands on him. And at the same time, James Storm just challenged for the TNA World title a few weeks ago. So if he beats James Storm, he looks that much better in the eyes of, of CR Daredevil uh, when it comes to figuring out who's going to challenge Sean Benjamin next for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. So he accepts. He accepts the match at lockdown. But he wants to make it very known, very clear, that what he did was not personal. It was just business because it is all about the business of being the TNA world heavyweight champion. So there you go. Bobby Roode making it clear that he, uh, he did what he did because of business, not because it was per personal at all. So we'll have to see if James Storm sees it as a business decision at all, but there you go. So officially for lockdown, it is Bobby Roode versus James Storm inside the steel cage. Then we get a 72 rated matchup. Honestly, I was hoping for better. I lack of a so lack of storyline heat. I guess this show's gonna be kind of rough. That's all right. You have to have rough shows every now and then, especially since we just had our best show we've ever had last week. You gotta have rough shows every now and then. But about that fantastic heat and good wrestling, Kurt Angle defeats Magnus in twelve forty six by submission with an ankle lock. During the matchup, Austin Aries distracted Magnus, led to. Kurt being able to hit the angle slam, lock him in the ankle lock, get him the victory. Uh, we're changing Austin Aries' gimmick because he has a fan favorite gimmick that's poor. And it's coming up stale like you saw last week. So we're changing it to more of an anti-hero gimmick. It's going to kind of go along with what his, what I have planned for his character throughout the rest of 2015. Uh, and again, adequate rating. All right. Well, large boost of star quality, so that's good. But yeah, so Kurt Angle gets the victory here over Magnus. By submission, thanks to a distraction from Austin Aries. Afterwards, Austin Aries struggled and going off script. That's good to know. Uh, Magnus looks pissed about what just happened. Holding his ankle, he's pissed about this. As Aries just kind of shrugs before he grabs a microphone and says, Hey, you want this to stop? Find your balls and accept my challenge. And he drops the mic and walks off. As Magnus just glares up at him, pissed off over holding his ankle still. So Apparently, it seems like uh, Austin Aries is going to keep Interfering in Magnus's matches and and everything be until Austin or until uh, Magnus accepts the challenge. So we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. Uh, that was not the main event though. It was the main event match, but it was not the main event as we have one last segment to end the show off with, which gets a seventy-five. Good to see. I don't care that I was underwhelming in the segment because to be honest, I expect that anyway. Um, MVP is out in the ring to end Impact this week. 
with D'Angelo De Niro and Sean Benjamin, and he's bragging. He is loving life right now. He says, last week, Daredevil tried to make this big time, these big-time matches, and what happened? What happened? D'Angelo De Niro defeated Eddie Edwards, and Sean Benjamin retained the TNA World Heavyweight Championship against Samoa Joe. The BDC cannot be stopped. It's about time that Daredevil finally realizes that he that we cannot be stopped. And that's when you hear the music of AJ Styles hit. But AJ Styles is not coming out alone. He comes out with yours truly, Sierra Daredevil. And Styles says, you know, it's funny. You sit here and talk about how they can't be stopped. But to be honest, none of you guys have really beaten me much. I mean, yes, I'll give you credit. Benjamin, you did defeat Joe last week. Um, you still haven't defended that title against me, though. But, but you, you know, you did, you did that. You did that. And, uh, and De Niro, I'm pretty sure I kicked your ass already recently. Uh, MVP, I think I've kicked your ass before. But you know what? This, this isn't about just me. This isn't about just me because this man here, pointing at yours truly, has something to say. And he hands the mic over to me and I'm like, you know what? You're right, AJ. It's not just about you. It's about everyone here in TNA. Because to be honest, everyone here in TNA is sick and tired of hearing... From the BDC. Now granted. Shelton Benjamin. You are one hell of a world champion. You've proved it. You just proved it last week. But we're sick of hearing about this. Time and time again. You guys are just out here. Blah 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 blah. And you're running your mouth. And you're doing all your. You know your cheap tactics. And all this BS. I mean D'Angelo De Niro. Did beat Eddie Edwards last week. But he kind of cheated to do so. And. And I gotta be honest. There's a lot of guys in the back. AJ's one of them, but there's a lot of guys in the back who are just not happy about the way that the BDC continues to do things here in TNA. And so I decided to make sure that a match is happening in a lockdown. And the crowd kind of gets up behind it a little bit. And he's like, and I'm, we're like, you know, there's that signature match that always happens every year at lockdown, or at least almost every year. It's a signature match here in TNA, a match that always that doesn't always happen every year, but does always happen at lockdown. It's, I believe it's called, uh, 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 what's the term? What's the, the name for it? Right. A lethal lockdown match. And the crowd just pops loudly. And MVP is like, everybody's just kind of in shock there. And Daredevil goes, it's going to be the BDC. And by the BDC, I mean the full BDC. You're in this as well, MVP. You five will be taking on Team TNA. Who is on Team TNA? Well, I'll let you, you know. I'll let you on a little secret right now. One of them is the man standing next to me right now. As for who else, you'll just have to. Wait for next week, won't you? So there you go. Lethal lockdown happening at lockdown. It is going to be the BDC, which is, of course, MVP, D'Angelo De Niro, Eddie Kingston, Homicide, and the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Sheldon Benjamin, taking on AJ Styles and four unnamed participants of Team TNA. 75 rated segment to end the show. 73 rating for the show itself. Not bad. A step down from last week, but still, it's not bad. Um, kind of a little bit more memorable because of the fact that we had those big announcements. So there you go. So the lockdown card is shipping up, shaping up pretty, uh, pretty interestingly. Um, we'll have to see what ends up happening with that for sure. Uh, we will go over a couple things really quick. Uh oh. Apparently, Nikki Bella was. Lamb blasting, lamb blasting a fan on social media who turned out to be only 12 years old. Oops. That sucks for her. Uh, aw. That sucks. Daphne's part of our roster. She got declared, she declared bankruptcy after following the collapse in an investment scheme that wiped out her entire life savings. That sucks. Sucks to see that for her. I, technically, I don't think it really does anything in-game-wise, but it's just a nice little story 
that happens, I guess. Well, not nice, but it's a it's a story that happens. So that sucks for her. I don't know if maybe that hurts her morale or something. You would think it would hurt her morale, but I don't know for sure if it does or not. Um, yeah. So there you go. Ratings for the week. 1.398 viewers. So a little bit, we had a little bit of dip in viewers. We lost about 150,000 viewers um, compared to last week's show. But that's all right. That's all right. We'll get them back. We're still doing really great. NXT at a 57. Tyler Breeze and Nick Dinsmore taking on Team Crime continues. FIP. Mr. Anderson and D wasn't that the same tag team match they just ran last week? Ring of Honor. Well, this time they changed the the main event of that up as Matt Hardy and Adam Cole defeated Delirious and Michael Elgin. Interesting. So yeah, uh, we'll look at Explosion really quick. Not gonna go super in depth with it, but Strong South Thugs, Hamza and Kingston defeated the Bravado Brothers. Veda Scott defeated Ali. Rhino defeated Marshall Von Eric. Canadian Ninjas defeated the Lucha Sisters. Brian Cage defeated T. Gray Uno. Yeah, um, quick thing here, really quick. Uh, the main event saw Triple Tails, which is Io, Mio Shirai, and Kairi Hojo defeat the Decays, Daphne, Katarina, and, Wa and Rosemary. So, quick little thing. Um, remember how I was going to build up Brian Cage as like this monster right off the start? Yeah, he went and had a match with T. Gray Uno, and he had a 27 in ring performance. So he's not going to be a monster right off the start. <laughs> he will be. He, uh, he, yeah, he, he's going to take a little bit of work to get him up to a monster status. So like, he will still probably be looked at as a monster in the narrative, but he's probably not going to be like on like some sort of crazy in ring winning streak or anything like that because that's going to take a little bit of time to get him up there. Nevertheless, thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And as you see, we have a hell of a show ahead of us in just nine days for lockdown. So next week, next episode, we will have just a single episode of Impact. Um, I kind of did out kind of weird. But we'll have just a single episode of Impact for the next video. And then the video after that will be lockdown 2015. So look forward to that in this series. But until then... Thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And we will catch you in the next video.